Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the little bit of information that has been added to the Patch 5.5 promotional site in the past week. Normally I cover these a little bit more in depth, but it feels like the meat of the website has largely been missing up to this point, and in fact there's still not that much on the website. With the upcoming live letter though, I figured probably best to take a peek, so that way we have somewhat of an expectation of some of the things we might see in the upcoming live letter. Now Patch 5.5 will be coming on April 13th, and with it we'll bring the finale of Shadowbringers, leading us into Endwalker, which will be the finale of the Heidelin and Zodiac story. So with that, they're trying to keep the spoilers to a minimum on the site, but I will say that there's very likely to be a few spoilers here or there if you have not done patch 5.4, so I recommend watching out for that if you haven't played that yet. And with that, we go down as towers rise and darkness falls, Eorzea's players take the stage, blades poised to meet the final days. Looking forward to that. Now for Death Unto Dawn Part 1, which is the only part of the story it is realistically covering, the Scions have finally succeeded in discovering a cure for tempering, which would prove instrumental in allowing the Eorzean Alliance and the land's beast tribes to settle their differences. Prospects of peace may soon fall to ruin, however, as Fan Daniel and the Talafaroi scheme to recreate the final days, and ominous towers rise in all corners of the realm. With the servants of chaos amassing at every turn, will the Scions uncover their plot before it is too late. Well, they better, because we only got 6.0 to wrap up this entire storyline that we have going on. Now, these images have been here for the last couple of days. It just shows a table, and every time we meet at this table, bad things happen. So it's only fitting that we end another expansion at a round table with our fellow Alliance members and our Scions of the Seventh Dawn. As we can see, Rian J uh, and Thancred sitting in the back, noticing Ishtola appear, uh, appears, appears to not be present here, but we do have the twins as well as uh, Graha and the Warrior of Darkness, meeting with the Alliance members on the left-hand side. Unless she's sneaking in back there, she's somewhere in the other room, she's probably uncovering something of great import, uh, especially with everything that happened in 5.4. We do also get a picture here of Estinian talking to Alphano for the first time in a long time. Alphano, in case you've forgotten, massively looked up to Estinian as an older brother figure, only for him to disappear and basically not get to see Alphano for several, several patches at this point, especially since he was, you know, in another dimension, in a sense, in another world with the first. So I'm looking forward to the reunion of those two, and that is only covering part one. Part two will be probably about eight weeks down the line, at least that's what we can expect, and the website will probably update sometime in the later months to tease that as well. Now, Pagalthon is actually a dungeon that I'm really excited for. They have a really good way of getting me excited for the new dungeons, even if I plan on probably only doing it once just for story and lore relevance. Uh, though the herding of livestock keeps the nomadic Amalja constantly on the move across the sweeping plains of Pagalthon, the permanent settlement of Zalmak offers respite for the weary and a venue for gatherings both political and social. Yet without intervention, it may not be long, so that is a great image of Pagalthon with the tower in the back. I've been predicting it ever since the first live letter happened that Lunar Ifrit was probably going to be the final boss, or some sort of Ifrit incarnation, some abomination like we saw with Lunar Bahamut in patch 5.4. Um, I have nothing really to indicate that any more than that what we've seen, but that would be my easiest guess when it comes to what these towers are doing or how we've discerned them so far. I get a quick little image at, you know, a, uh, it's not even a coral, it's the word I'm looking for. It's using the coral model, but I forget what the uh, Allegans call their versions of these creations. Uh, I, I always forget, and unfortunately I didn't think of it ahead of time. But I do, of course, like seeing the sickle dancer weapons, as always. Speaking of which, this gear set... I know some of these pieces are available elsewhere in the game through like a different color palette or or whatever means it may be, but I'm a big fan of the helmet on the left at the very least. Pretty okay looking armor set. I'm never a huge fan of the, I guess the the near topless, like like upper half. I, I don't know, it's just not super appealing. I prefer like big heavy armor, so the person on the left really is the one that, uh, that resonates with me the most. But I got my Judge armor from the previous patch, so I'm feeling all right. But any of you Glamour collectors, I'm sure some of you are looking at this and coming up with ideas as always. So of Whirlit, another thing I am super pumped to get the finale of, with, ad with adamantine armor and a beating blood red core, the diamond weapon is the culmination of countless sacrifices and untold suffering. When the ultimate triumph of the Seventh Legion's monstrous weapon project descends upon Whirlit, who will be saved and who shall fall? So with that, we just get a quick picture of Varos Van Var... I, can't, I can never say his name. It's always a tongue twister to me. Uh, him. 
I always have Valens. Valens is normally what I call him. Yeah, Valens. There you go. And then we get a picture of Gaius looking just... It, he's looking. <laughs> Looks like he's in Whirlit. Is that Whirlit in the back? I have to imagine that is Whirlit where he is. It kind of reminds me of the background in the Emerald Weapon. So, And immediately following that is the Cloud Deck, which is the actual trial. There will be a Cloud Deck and the Cloud Deck Extreme. This will be our final Extreme trial that we know of for the expansion. The advent of the Empire's final and most fatal weapon sees Gaius and the Warrior of Light take to the skies aboard Sid's latest creation. Will the miracles of technology and camaraderie allow them to rise above the threat of destruction that looms over Whirlit once more? I'm getting big Final Fantasy X Evre vibes, uh, the boss that you fight aboard the airship, mostly because of the missiles, I suppose, here. Um, but you can see him being chased, which means he's probably absorbed some sort of airborne primal, which uh, probably leads into the, the way this is feeling. Seeing the cloud deck itself, uh, you can see there is another platform on the other side, and it looks to be like there is, uh, maybe, I can't tell if it's somebody casting something, but you can see on the other side of the machinist, on the other side of Diamond Weapon behind him, what looks to be like a little circle that can be stood in. I don't know if that's an AoE. I don't know if there's going to be a split where there's four people on one side, four people on the other. But we're probably going to be making use of both of these platforms and going between the two quite frequently. Um, we can also see some more intricacies of the Diamond Weapon's design, his finger laser cannons, as we can see right there. And I have a feeling that he absorbed a, a wind primal, uh, just a, a flying primal of some kind, most likely. And so I'm, I'm wondering how much of this is going to be based on Xenos' combat data and how much of it on Shinryu's combat data. So you have to remember that the diamond weapon does use Xenos as its, uh, as its combat protocol, similar to the way we dealt with Nail, the way we dealt with uh, Hydrus, and the way that we dealt with the Gaius in the Emerald Weapon. So I'm curious that how much of this is Xenos and how much of it's Shinryu, because they would have a decent amount of combat data from when Xenos absorbed Shinryu and we fought him back at the finale of 4.0. Um, either way, it should be interesting seeing what they do. I'm going to have to farm this for the mount. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's going to be a thing. I can't wait. Isgard Restoration and its updates, thanks to the tireless efforts of Sky Builders, one and all, the Ryzen Song, uh, Risen Song Quarter, now stands complete, bringing the restoration effort to a triumphant close. As New Age dawns in Ishgard, luminaries from across the Eorzea Eors have been invited to the firmament to take part in a ceremony commemorating the momentous occasion. This is the, there is going to be some crafting related endgame content, similar to the previous uh, Ishgard patches, although it's not going to be the competitive rankings that we've had in the past or at least they've said that the last ranking system is behind us you can see some moogles here you can see some crafters that guy looks like he's holding a moogle up in fact they are both holding i didn't even notice this the first time i looked those are those are like floats or something those are like paper mache moogles and you can see a lalafell and another and a uh, and a hrothgar holding them on the left and the right. i actually hadn't noticed that they were being held up i don't know how i didn't notice that the first time i actually looked at this picture uh, so there's going to be some fun stuff happening there, and there should be a bunch of rewards for people to collect. PlayStation 5 Open Beta begins April 13th as well. If you have a PS4 version, even if it's the disc version, you can play the PlayStation 5 version on April 13th through a free upgrade. And if you don't yet have an account for Final Fantasy XIV, just make a free trial account when the PlayStation 5 Open Beta kicks up, and you will be able to participate. With that, that is going to be everything that is available here. They just have a few pictures here at the bottom that... Uh, tie in this was these were in the ps5 section these are things from the little preview trailer that they showed us already see the world in stunning 4k epic battles uh you know it's just, uh, and lightning fast load times which is really weird to try to convey in a picture because it just shows the teleport which doesn't indicate load times but the you know that's fine it's fine as it is and then what is this they feature a crystal clear high resolution interface uh, it's, it's, it's all fun stuff basically there's nothing here that we we hadn't already looked at when we were scrolling past before other than the, uh, I guess, the render of the diamond weapon, him and his, his big old thickness, as I like to say. And with that, that's all we have so far on the 5.5 site, but we will have a massive dump of information in a good way in uh, just a couple days with the live letter. So we'll be covering that in a video, we'll be covering that in State of the Realm, and of course we will have our preliminary patch notes the following week. So with that, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for all things Final Fantasy XIV and patch 5.5 in the immediate future. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, take care.